Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Ibanez is doing something really cool. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of their Hoshino USA division, they are doing a limited run of 50 guitars. This whole series reminds me of the old Gibson Guitar of the Week, where they did a limited edition guitar almost every week of the year. However, this time we have 50 custom shop never before offered to the public, made in the legendary Los Angeles custom shop of Ibanez. 20 of them anyways, the other 30 were made in their Japan custom shop. This is where all the high-end artist guitars were made. So we're talking artists like Paul Gilbert, Joe Satriani, Steve Vai. Those level of caliber guitars are being made available to the public for the first time. But let me tell you, these things are not going to be cheap. Here are the expected MSRP. We're ranging anywhere between 24,000 and maybe the cheapest at about 10,000. However, there is a catch to that. These are all being sold on a lottery system. Each of these 50, there's only one made. So if you want one of these, you might want to talk to your dealers to submit a ticket in for the chance to get the opportunity to represent this guitar as a dealer. Because as of the time of recording, we won't know who gets each of these guitars until 2-21-22. But if one of these catches your attention, you can check out this webpage at that date and they should have this all updated for us. And there are so many to go over, but even if you're not interested in this brand, at least stay tuned for the first 10 because I think you'll like what you see here. Alright, let's start with the coolest one that I totally want to buy, known as as the LACS5, aka Root Beer Float. This is an Ibanez Iceman, and it just looks so stunning. They have this big, thick maple top on it that's naturally exposed, so it looks like binding, and then they got that awesome root beer finish going on here. Very tall pickup rings on this thing. You get that harmonica style like bridge. Your knobs have got those grippers on it, but check out their fretboard right here. It appears to have the exact same phenomenon as the binding right here, except for, to me anyways, that looks like separate wooden binding that they put on here because the maple that they used for the first time on this fretboard looks a little bit different from what they have on the sides. And they also have the lumen lays, which means these will glow in the dark. Their block inlays have strikes within them that appear to be a mother of pearl abalone mix. And then when you move on up to the headstock, it looks like they went as far as putting a wooden truss rod <laughs> cover on this thing. And you have the continuation of the exposed maple binding on the headstock. So here's a good shot of it from the front. Pretty nice looking guitar, right? But get this, the specs on this three-piece maple carina neck so you move it to the back yeah it's not too special back here but if you really zoom in here yeah that that is indeed a three-piece neck that is sweet the estimated price on that one is seventeen thousand dollars but man if that's on a lottery system and people are going to fight over it i'd be interested to see what that could potentially sell for even on the used market this is my absolute favorite one of the series because it's vintage inspired i'm hoping just hoping and praying I might be able to get that one. Next up, my number two choice has to be The Artist, another vintage inspired model. Obviously, I like it because it's kind of like a Les Paul, but in double cut format. You've got the two humbuckers, the harmonica like style bridge, but it has all these fancy EQs on it as well. But the side profile shot is fascinating. It looks like it might have a black, white, and black multi-layered binding here, thick binding in the cutaway to hide the maple top on the sides. But that just always looks so sweet, especially since they have another white layer on this side. It really makes that pop. Now, I'm not a big fan of having a whole bunch of knobs and whatnot, but that's just part of the charm of these old things. But it's a full featured three band active EQ system. And then check out the vine inlays on this thing. So it goes all the way up the fretboard. It's multi, 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 multiply bound. And then it appears to be a really nice dark ebony color. You can see the rest of the specs here. It looks like, wow, U-shaped neck. That'd be pretty cool. And hey, that one's a little bit easier on your pocketbook. Only 11,000. <laughs> Next up, we've got one called Slick. This is another one that they used within their series. It appears to be a seven string variation. However, there's also an eight string that we'll see later on in this series. So they did some very similar elements here. You've got that exposed maple cap here looking like binding. And then this one's actually a neck through instrument. You can just barely see that through this white stain top. Apparently there's a slight black stain underneath that. And then when you get this thing in the light, they have this finish that changes color along the edges, and then the entire backside of this instrument is done up in that as well. As you can see right here, I mean, these photos do this one no justice. Definitely check out that video to see that thing. Aaron was very proud of his work on this one. But this photo shows off that quilty top underneath it too. The finish kind of steals the show on that one though. You don't even notice the wood grain, but apparently that's a three-piece maple and purple heart neck. So now I'm wondering, is this maple part right here actually part of the neck? And maybe they're doing like what I'm experienced with fenders on, like 
like the channel bound necks potentially i mean the only ibanezes i've ever reviewed are the yvette young i've got an ichika nito signature ordered but those have been intermediate ibanez i mean i guess i also had the steve Vai gem and the pia but these things are built on a whole different level so i don't really know too much about how they build these things so that's why i'm hoping maybe i can get one of these however this has you know floyd rose system it's not one i'd want to buy but i definitely appreciate how cool it is but wow 18,000 on that one, and then the eight string version is just a tad bit more. Next up, we have a cool Hang 10 Talman. So this one might actually answer my questions a little bit more. We can see the maple neck through construction right here. They're going for that surfboard vibe, but then we have the wooden binding in a completely different layer. Now, maybe that varies guitar to guitar, but I love the finish that they used for this. It looks just like water and it goes perfectly with that theme that they were going for. And we've got the covered pickups. It's kind of like their unique take on a Stratocaster, I guess you could say. Okay, and they were trying to make these things look like buoys. Okay, all right. But that neck through construction on here really is fascinating. And it looks like they're putting some sort of a layer of wood or maybe binding or something else in between the top and the back wood. So that gives you kind of an interesting sandwich vibe right there. I dig that. And then, oh yeah, that headstock's looking great. Kind of same thing they were doing on the body, but that is one of the fanciest Talmans I've ever seen. So it looks like this one also has a maple purple heart maple neck on it. And you can see all the other different specs right here. But that's certainly an interesting one. How much is it? Oh boy, another 16. I thought that one would have been more closer to 10, but all right. And please do keep in mind that's more so like leaked information that was given approval to be posted online. It could be slightly different at the dealer that you're at. They don't have to sell it for that much. They might be able to cut you a deal or maybe they even want more. So all these prices I'm showing you in this video, those are tentative. Next, we have Solar Flare. I just thought this was a fascinating paint job. Like, I've seen similar guitars to this, but this one really just pulls that all off very well. You've got these streaky lines. You've got these metallic-looking pickups, really flashy chrome hardware everywhere. This would look pretty fantastic in the stage lights. So let's see, what did they do here? Oh my goodness. That's a stainless steel top. It's not a wood top or a painted on design. It looks like they just scratched up some stainless steel and the effect is fantastic. I'd like to see more manufacturers do something like that. It looks like they even did that for the top of the headstock. Now that's real heavy metal. But then the back just looks kind of normal. Bolt on neck for this style of instrument. You can see all the other specs right here. But nice, we even have some behind the scenes photos. So they cut it out of stainless steel. That does indeed look like they just uh, scratched it up or maybe they even did like a, a router CNC design or something. I'm not sure there. Then they gave it a yellow coat over top of that. All right. And then they gave it the red burst edges. Nice. How much do you think solar flare is? A little under 15,000. But if you want a similar design, but completely different, Check out wind shear. This is one I'd be tempted to say, okay, locking trem system, maybe I'll try to tackle you for this thing because it's interesting. It has these scoops out of the body here and those look incredibly deep. We've got like an ocean theme going on here, but you can see the side profile of this body. It looks like it's maple on top, maple on the back, heavily figured, including for our neck here. But ah, oh, man, it's not neck through or set neck or anything. It's a bolt on neck. But yes, indeed, it is entirely built from flame maple. Nice. I love heavily figured guitars. So they even gave the neck the same finish, but man, those frets look fantastic. They must be stainless steel would be my guess. And the white accent inlays really work well since everything else is such a dark blue. And oh, okay. Those aren't just holes scalloped out of the top. They went through the entire guitar. Kind of like some gills or something. That's interesting. It makes sense though, because maple's kind of heavy. So having an entire guitar made out of flamed maple, that would get pretty heavy. But I love the look that you can't always see straight through the guitar. You got to get it at an angle, such as this one right here. I almost wish they would have went for white covered pickups though, to match the inlays. Maybe that would have been too much. Maybe they're trying to subdue it a tad. But you've got the Ibanez logo up there in white. But then when you flip over to the back, I think I almost like the back of this instrument better than the front. But that one is estimated to be around 16,000. Here's another interesting one, Torch the Cosmos. So it appears we have some sort of a cosmic finish over their typical RG style instrument, but they do this by a slow burn. So they take a titanium top and they burn it. Okay, so I mean, that's what they actually do. They do all that without a single drop of paint. The back of the guitar appears to just be black, but that does have an interesting vibe. That one's estimated to be around 15. And then this one, another RG style with two humbuckers. 
in a beautiful sunrise finish, as they're calling this one. It's got the same maple neck thing going on with beautiful figure tops with an awesome finish. And of course, you're glowing the dark inlays. But okay, all right. So normally, apparently these are 25 and a half, but they shrunk this one down to 24 and three quarters. Ibanez, you did a great job showing off all the unique details of this one, because sometimes people will miss stuff like that. That's a good photo to show that. But man, that thing looks colorful in their stock photo. But you can check out all the specs on that one right here and a couple of behind the scenes photos. For me though, now that I've actually taken time to look at all these, I kind of know their prices a little bit better. It's all about that ice, man. I think that is the coolest one because it's just the coolest shape in general. So those were my personal top picks. If you enjoy Ibanez guitars, you're welcome to stay with me as we go through all of them because who knows what we might find here. Did you know they do these jazz boxes too? We've got Totally Jazz, which is an arch top here with what looks like a Bartolini humbucker in the neck position. I really like that tailpiece design. Like that is a thick looking wooden tailpiece and it's even multi-scaled. And oh yeah, of course they're going to have some flamed woods on the sides. You don't traditionally do crazy woods on the top of these arch tops. So, looks a little bit goofy from head on, and pretty traditional from the back as far as these like L5S guitars go, but that is a highly specced out beast. And I don't know what's going on there, but <laughs> that, that's interesting how they made that thing. Then if you want something a little less jazzy, they've got Totally Jam in here. So pretty basic tobacco-like sunburst going on here. Two Bartolini pickups. Looks like this one's also multi-scaled. But ooh, wow. Swamp Ash Top. Definitely looks pretty interesting. But hey, before we continue on with electric guitars, let's go ahead and give our bass friends some love. So we've got Dale, Thompson, Inferno, Natsu, Haru, Hercules, Aki, Fuyu, Sakura, and Autumn Woods. Autumn Woods, yeah, that, that's pretty darn cool. It looks like they've actually hand inlaid the top additional woods to give it this. They didn't just paint it. Man, that'd be really cool on the maple leaves. Especially if they would have put like a quilty wood over top of that so the leaves change colors like that. <laughs> it looks like we got a moon right here. That is a pretty sweet art base. Looks like it's a five string. And it looks like that might be like a burl maple wood would be my guess. And oh goodness. They even did wooden pickup covers, <laughs> didn't notice that. And maple purple heart neck right there. So pretty interesting specs on this one. Sakura looks like they did some very similar things here, but we have an active EQ system. Now that we mentioned it, I think we did uh, review one of the Ibanez bass, or at least part of their Sound Gear brand. So this one, we've got a similar burl maple top going on with the inlays, the wooden pickup covers, very nice dark ebony fretboard, like the inlay that they used on that. But it looks like they went a little bit fancy for this center block of maple here. They're saying they used timeless timber maple. I don't know too much about that, but apparently they're pretty rare and special. And ooh, I like the headstock on that one. Love the multicolors to symbolize the mountain range. Looks like the bases are a little bit cheaper. This one's a little under 13,000. Cheaper in quotations. Fuyu, very similar to the other ones, except for we have snowflakes on the fretboard. Kind of reminds me of some exotic granite. But Fuyu means winter in Japanese. So that's what they were going for on this one. Icy Tundra. But that is a six string bass. I don't know, the snowflakes almost seem out of place. Like I would like to see those again on like a piercingly pure blue finished instrument. But you can check out the specs on that one right here and find it at that lucky dealer for around 12,000. Here we've got Aki, very similar stuff going on, except for this time we have these inlays of more leaves. Oh man, that's a very nice looking fretboard. They weren't kidding around when they used high quality stuff here. I like that each leaf is a different color too. This is one seeing it in stock photos, I probably wouldn't have thought too much of it, but seeing it in photos like these is like, okay, maybe I get it a bit more. We've got some cool behind the scenes shots on this one as well. And surprisingly, that one's expected to be a little bit more than 11,000. Hercules, it looks like they went for the neck through design and then they inlaid an exotic top wood right here into a super flamed top. <laughs> They've got a whole bunch of stuff going on here, including your active electronics. Locking Neutrik Jack, nice. But this is a six string multi scale. Okay, so that means each string has a slightly different scale length to it and your frets are going to be a little bit slanted. That's an interesting one, but so far I'd say my least favorite out of the bases. Maybe it would look better in person, but it's definitely highly specced out here. But it's got babinga, so it's gotta be good. Now Haru's looking pretty nice, so that's Japanese for spring. They did a very good job of capturing that. I mean, it just looks kind of pink, and then you get some red right here. Once again, love the inlay right here. 
I feel like the seasonal ones. Like if you're a really rich guy that lives in Japan, you could buy one for each season and display it at the appropriate time. But you've got your cherry blossom inlay here. I could see a famous bassist using this thing on stage. Like baby metal. <laughs> Here we've got Natsu. See, this is what I wanted on the snowflake one. A top similar to this, but this one's more so oceanic themed. Using a full moon maple top. I like the wood grain we've got going on here. A little bit of bird's eye, and then I'm not quite sure what that is. Apparently just supposed to be a splashing wave inlay. Pretty interesting one. Not my favorite, but might speak to somebody. Looks like they've got that same exotic wood in the middle of this neck as well. Being offered at just a little bit more than 11,000. Inferno takes the artsy fartsy stuff away and just gives you this very nice Bartolini spec active base that's also neck through construction, if you can even see it underneath this very dark red finish. Oh man, they even flamed the back of it. Nice. Oh, wait a minute. What? <laughs> it's Sound Gear branded? Huh. Custom Shop Sound Gear. I thought that was like their lower division. Maybe I don't have my facts straight on that. Whew. That one is estimated at 19,000. Then we've got Thompson here. It looks like a five string with fantastic quilty tops. That looks great. Oh, nice. And then the back is a different color. And they made the back plate out of the same wood. That looks great. Then the last base, it's Dale. Kind of similar to that last one, but instead of quilty, it's more flamey. Here it is from the front and the back. Now that we're done with the bases, let's check out some of the honorable mention electric guitars. We've got Echo here. They've got the same fretboard thing going on here. We have some vine inlays, but I love the fact that this is all blue, blinged out with gold hardware, but yet they masked off the edge of that to give it that natural look. It really takes a guitar that would have otherwise, you know, kind of been lost on the edges and just transformed it to a whole new level. And ooh, it's even a set neck version. We haven't seen too many of those this time. Although the fretboard kind of looks dry on this one. And ooh, hidden hollow tone. So underneath the top, they actually have chambers. That's a nice looking one, but they've got too, too many strings on it for me. But as far as pretty eight strings go, that one's got it made. You even have a cool matching headstock. Bronson is kind of similar to what we just saw, but in more of like a dark finish. I think I would choose the blue one over this one. RGGT looks like a carbon fiber guitar to me. What have they done here? Yes, indeed, carbon fiber. It's not new, but to this day, it is very unusual due to its cost, they say. Which means we need to look that up right away. Hmm. Not that expensive in comparison to some of these other ones. But I like the way they have the normal carbon fiber design right here. But then they have a bee honeycomb thing going on here. That's an interesting one. I like how they did the headstock like that too. Dark Iris is another beautiful one. Kind of a quilty purplish top. Same thing with the natural binding of the wood and everything there with the cool inlays. Matching headstock that says custom on it. That's got to be a sign of prestige right there. And then the back. It's black and you've got that natural neck going through it. I think I would have preferred them to stain that neck a nice purple color. But here we've got Calypso. Kind of similar, but this time hot pink. But what does the back look like? Same as the last one. All right, we've got a whole bunch. Let's pick up the pace. So we've got Sly, which is an HSS Strat type guitar with the very cool neck through design and a Perloy pickguard. Looks like we've got that kind of vintage Ibanez logo on it too. Roscoe is a fantastic looking example of that. Kind of reminds me of the Fender Rarity series. That is a very deeply quilted top with a nice dark root beer finish. That's cool. And as far as black backs go, I love that they left the neck part natural. Golden Eagle here really makes use of that maple binding again. And they went half and half on the finish for this one on the back. Wouldn't say it was my favorite, but it's all right. Olvera seems to have some very similar elements, but in an HH setup. But this time the purple heart in the center appears to have some extreme figuring within it. I don't think I've seen that before. Glenn is a fantastic looking beast. I really like the contour carve right here. It shows off that mahogany body, but that's an HSH setup. And if you thought the top looked good, check out the back. That mahogany has some pretty nice figuring within it. Here we've got a neck through RG style one with the maple binding going on here. It looks like maybe ebony fretboard. Super flamed out neck through pearloid pick guard. That's a nice one. Familiar, yet very high end. Oh, wow. And that back is insane. Love that. It looks like we even got a satin finish on the neck for super speedy playing. Amethyst. Purple. Very similar to that last one. That's a nice looker. But now the moment of truth. Does the back look as good? Nope. <laughs> they really went all out on that red one. Here we've got Sweet Peat. You know, like peat moss instead of sweet peas. Okay. It's interesting because it's heavily quilted down here and then kind of loses its quiltiness up here. But they've got some nice natural colors on the back. But wow, maybe that was just a bad angle of this one. Because in this photo, that top looks explosive all the way throughout. 
Cheeto, for obvious reasons. I like the name of that one. But take a look at the front. They've got the matching headstock and everything. Interesting block inlays. Then you look at the back. You might not think of it too much here, but check it out in this photo. Oh yeah, that's great wood grain. Is that swamp ash? Yes, indeed it is. Here's that eight string version of that seven string one we were looking at earlier. So you can pick your poison of how many strings you want. Now this one I want to buy just for its name. Muffins. <laughs> okay. So it's like a red color top, neck through Tallman styled instrument, but this time two humbuckers. And that might even be a set bridge. Ooh, yes, indeed. It appears to be string through. Okay. I mean, maybe not my favorite, but I like the specs on this one as a guy who doesn't really like trem systems. But wow, 16 on that one. Don't like it that much. <laughs> We've got Choclozuma's Revenge right here with a giant top on this guy. Flamed maple and mahogany back looks like. Love the maple fretboard option on that. Looks great with the blue. Zuma is one nice looking one. Ooh, scarf joint but flamed. Interesting. Unparalleled looks like another multi-scaled instrument. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's tiny. I don't think I've ever seen a multi-scale tiny guitar. Like Gibsons are what, 24 and three quarter. Fender's generally 25 and a half. A lot of these style Ibanez, I think that they're what, 25 and a half, but 23 inches on the low side and 22 on the high? That's fascinating. Get a really skilled player on that. And I think they could have fun with what they're talking about right here. That is weird. <laughs> it's, it's not quite as crazy as like the 19 inch scale length of mini guitars that I've demoed before, but it's not that much bigger either. The Roadstar looks pretty nice with a bird's eye neck bolted on and a very cool looking headstock. Rangefinder, similar to that other tiny one. This is a, a, one of those guitars that has a million frets. I think it's 34 if I remember correctly. And this one has the lumen lays not only on the side, but also on the top. I like that. Okay, it looks like this one's only 30, but I've definitely seen at least a 34 fret before. Here we have Night Owl. Looks like a hardtail setup HSS with some fancy electronics going on and a fancy neck back here. Roasted maple. Can't say it's my favorite, but it looks nice. Prometheus, sweet name, awesome explosive top. Oh, oh, and look at the headstock. They have special tuner tips on it. And of course, a super flamed out neck. The Old Guard, looks like they were trying to go after like a vintage style Stratocaster, but with a really cool figured neck. Yeah, this one looks pretty plain to me, but they definitely modernized it with the scoop right there. Asterisk, looks like an HSS format of that same one with very similar specs. White Flame, they added the tortoiseshell pick card to it, and I'd say I like the neck even better on this one, but in stock photos, it looks a little bit more creamy, so that's probably one you can appreciate better in person, judging by this photo anyways. Sunset has a beautiful top with an interesting back and is another one of those slightly shortened scale lengths, but not like that tiny one. This one's Jade Mantis. They've got green and yellows going on, including on the fretboard. That looks pretty cool. It reminds me when they use like Moto or Perloid fretboards. But if you thought the top colors were interesting, Look at the back, <laughs> all the colors in the rainbow. Plumes of Ash has an interesting top to it and a cool color scheme, including an awesome fretboard. Spalted Maple works really well for a fretboard in my opinion. Sometimes it looks nice on tops, other times not. But whoa, when you see the whole thing at once, it's kind of a mess of colors and figuring. I'm not sure if I like that one, but the back works pretty good. Caldera, you've got like some water desert type vibes here with a very nice vine inlay. The hybrid flora, they call it. And okay, I was close. Hot spring meets the mountain. I could see somebody falling in love with that. Ooh, and then it gets piercingly plain on the back. Continuing on that desert theme, we've got Desert's Edge, where the grass starts and the desert ends. Okay, I like that. People always say they like guitars with stories. This one tells a story with its wood grain. I still kind of classify it as an ugly guitar, but I really like the back of that one. Ooh, Pinot Noir. Out of the ones that we've just been looking at, I think this one has to be my favorite because you get a little bit of that like blood red going on here. It's got some purple over here. You've got an extra string on this one, but I think it's the backwood that makes this special because it's got all that nice dark wood grain. And did you notice what they did here? They matched the neck to the top. So it's got a nice symmetry going on there. But ooh, that's Karina wood on the back of that one. And we've got a Wenge neck. Koa Canyon, ooh, they did something interesting here. So it looks like maybe they epoxy filled the center of something. So that's a pretty cool clear appearance that they've got going on there. That'd look sweet with some light behind it. An interesting one nonetheless. It's like they, they saw the guitar in half and then had to put it back together. And then lastly, we have Tropics, a cool multicolored instrument. The stock photos make this one look sweet. I love that color scheme. 
All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed looking at all these with me today. Let me know your favorite one down in the comment section and which one you would want me to buy to review a demo, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.